on this book starring Eve Arden. Time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks and Strike. With but one exception, Brooks is on the friendliest of terms with her fellow English teachers at Madison High School. The lone exception being Miss Daisy Enright. You might call Miss Enright and me friendly enemies. That is, we're enemies because we're both friendly with Mr. Boynton. <laughs> But since I was stuck at home with a cold most of last week, Miss Enright was able to outfriend me with him by dating him every night. So there we were, me in with a steaming inhalator, and her out steaming Mr. Boynton. <laughs> well, after a restless night, I got up at 6.30 Friday morning, roused my landlady, and a few minutes later, we were in the breakfast room. For the unearthly hour to be getting up. How do you feel, Connie? Unearthly, Mrs. Davis. <laughs> I took a look at myself in the mirror, and I think my face broke. <laughs> my goodness. That's seven years' bad luck. <laughs> Let's put them on my bill. <laughs> I have a charge account in the bad luck union. What are we having for breakfast? I'm afraid it'll be rather stupid, dear. You know that Rhode Island hen I'm keeping in the backyard? The one that the butcher told me would lay an egg for us every morning? Yes. The poor little thing didn't feel up to it this morning. <laughs> well, don't look at me. I don't feel up to it either. <laughs> I'll just have some coffee. You're out of coffee, dear. I made tea. I'll take tea, then. I drank it. <laughs> Here's a glass of milk. It's nice and cold, isn't it? The toast is. <laughs> so the milk. I think it's a good idea to have cold drinks during this unseasonable hot spell we're having. The weather's really been balmy. Aren't we all? <laughs> Mr. Boynton remarked that it seemed like summer when he called me late last night. He promised to call me early in the evening, but he was unable to get home until after midnight. What took him out so late? A Rhode Island hen named Miss Enright. <laughs> she happened to drop by in her car. Then she happened to take Mr. Boynton for a drive. Then she happened to run out of gas. Where? In the hills, Nash. <laughs> Mr. Boynton told me all about it. Had to walk three miles to a service station and three miles back with a can of gas. A six-mile hike. Imagine. Then what happened, Connie? Nothing. Miss Enright was so pooped out from that long walk, she just drove him home. Hike to the gas station. Yes, he said he felt it his duty as a man to stick with the car and see that nobody stole it. <laughs> well, how do you like that? Mr. Boynton isn't the most romantic chap in the world, is he? No, but he ranks right behind Barry Fitzgerald. <laughs> he did make a date with me for tonight, though. He's going to take me out. Out where, Connie? Out to his backyard. <laughs> the weather's been so mild, he suggested that we have a barbecue out there, Mrs. Davis. It seems he dipped into his tool kit yesterday and built a barbecue pit out of an old bathtub. My, he is handy, isn't he? With tools, yes, but give him a woman and he's all thumbs. <laughs> Miss Brooks, welcome back to school. Thanks. Oh, I was awfully sorry to hear about your cold. There are an awful lot of germs going around, aren't there? Yes, but let's leave Miss N right out of this. <laughs> I've got to report to your father, Harriet. Routine check-in, you know. Mr. Conklin's in his office, I suppose. Well, he is, but I'd better warn you, Miss Brooks. 
Braddy's in a very nasty mood this morning. It's Codfish Balls Day. Codfish Balls Day? <laughs> Is that a legal holiday? I guess you don't understand. You see, every Friday, Mother makes codfish balls for dinner. And Daddy hates them so much, it just ruins his whole day thinking about them. Lately, he's hit upon a cunning scheme to palm them off on guests. On guests? That I don't understand either. Well, last Friday, Daddy invited Miss Enright over for dinner. And this morning, he offered her another invitation. But this time, she turned it down. You see, Mother just cooks enough for the family, Miss Brooks. So when Daddy gives his portion to the guests, there's nothing Mom can do about it. That'll give you an idea how chagrined he feels about codfish balls. I imagine the codfish feel the same way about him. <laughs> this is all very enlightening, Harriet, but I really must go in and report. See you later. All right, Miss Brooks. Bye now. Good morning, Mr. Conklin. Well, 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 if it isn't my favorite teacher. <laughs> of my heart to see you again. Your nasty cold kept you away from me for several days, you naughty girl. <laughs> well, you simply must make up for it by letting me see more of you, mustn't you? Forgive me, sir, but I don't understand. My dear, I want you to come over to my house tonight for dinner. Now I do. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, sir, but I have a date with Mr. Boynton. With Boynton, you say? Well, bring him along. The more the matter is. Gad, what a ball you'll have. <laughs> the ball, Mr. Conklin. Mr. Boynton and I have already made plans for a little barbecue in his backyard. A barbecue? Oh, a barbecue. Uh, no doubt you'll be feasting on my favorite barbecued ribs. Yes, we'll have ribs, I suppose. With hot sauce? With hot sauce. I have an idea. Since you can't come to my house, suppose I join you in Boynton and we'll have a million laughs. <laughs> Sorry, there'll be just enough food for two. Well, I'd better get busy. If I make this a day of intensive work, perhaps I'll be able to get those things off my mind. That's the ticket. Work. You may go now, Miss Brooks. Yes, sir. Goodbye, and a happy work day to you, sir. And a happy back-to-school day to you. And a happy Codfish Falls Day to you. <laughs> I want to thank you for being so thoughtful when I had my cold, Mr. Boynton. Oh, did you like the gift? Very much. I still have some left. Glad you liked it. It's the nicest box of Kleenex I ever got. <laughs> Just a little remembrance, that's all. So you were locked in at home for quite a spell. Must feel good to get out, hmm? Oh, yes, indeed. I can't begin to describe the eagerness with which I'm looking forward to this evening, Mr. Boynton. We ought to have loads of fun. We? We, 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 yes. <laughs> you and me, us. Apparently there's been a misunderstanding. Tonight I have a date with Miss Enright. I'll say there's been a misunderstanding. Mr. Boynton, when you called me last night, you distinctly said, and I quote, we'll have a barbecue in my backyard tomorrow night. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> when I phoned you, Miss Brooks, if you recall, it was after midnight. So when I said tomorrow night, I didn't mean tonight. I meant tomorrow night, which is tomorrow. In the motion picture, our Miss Brooks holds the bag again. <laughs> Gosh, I'm sorry if I've disappointed you. Well, you have. Well, I wouldn't deliberately hurt your feelings for the world, you know that. But then I wouldn't want to hurt Miss Enright either. Wait a minute. I have a suggestion that might meet with your approval. Suppose I hold the barbecue tonight and have both of you over, you and Miss Enright. Is that your best offer? It's all I can do. Then I accept. <laughs> but will there be enough food? Oh, don't worry about that. Miss Enright and I went to the movies last Wednesday, and it was grocery night. 
I want a whole box of stuff, big enough to feed a horse. Well, that'll take care of Miss Enright, but what about us? Now, just one brushing with Colgate Dental Cream removes up to 85% of the... The barbecue was to be a triple decker affair with Mr. Boynton, Miss Enright, and me in the middle. Well, since I've always been one to blush at playing the lettuce in an eternal triangle sandwich, I discreetly avoided contact with Miss Enright during our morning classes. At noon, I strolled into the school cafeteria, and upon making certain that her saddle was not hanging in the check room... <laughs> to my usual table where Walter Denton greeted me with characteristic effusion. The salutations of first flower in the <laughs> Your recent absence from these hallowed halls traced me to the Christmas book, but now I rejoice to see you back in harness. Thanks, Walter. <laughs> Pull up a chair for me and I'll hitch old Dobbin to the shed. I <laughs> certainly... Yeah, how about this corner one? Nicely concealed, isn't it? That's perfect, because if Miss Enright should come in, I'd like to avoid her. Harry, you told me Mr. Boynton's going to have a barbecue in his backyard tonight, and Miss Enright's been invited. So have I. Well, you too? It's co-educational. <laughs> wow. I hope you have a lot of fun. What are you going to barbecue? Miss Enright, I hope. <laughs> you shouldn't say things like that, Miss Brooks. Well, in view of the fact that she's constantly praising your beauty, I, I really can't understand your aversion to Miss Enright. Why, only this morning she passed a very complimentary remark about your hair, I thought. Miss Enright did? What did she say? Oh, she said that you have the loveliest blonde hair she's ever seen on a brunette. <laughs> she claims that she's naturally blonde. Let's drop Miss Enright, shall we? I think if we try real hard, we might come up with a more pleasant topic. Well, hello there, Walter. Oh, hi, Miss Enright. The cafeteria is a bit crowded today. May I sit here with you and your mother? <laughs> mother? Oh, forgive my taking you for Walter's mother, darling. But you are looking younger every day. <laughs> Thanks, Grandma. <laughs> Pull up a sturdy couch and sit down. <laughs> oh, you're sweet. But this chair will do. Yeah, excuse me a minute, ladies. I've got to go and get some pie. Oh, hold my place. I'll be right back. How nice to be alone with you, Miss Brooks. I do enjoy your company. As a matter of fact, Mr. Barton told me that we'll all be together at the barbecue tonight, and I was delighted to learn that you're going to horn in on us. <laughs> My pleasure. Now, don't you disappoint me, darling. If you fail to show up, I'll simply die. That's okay. You still have eight more lives to go. <laughs> I do adore your sense of humor, Miss Brooks. But it might interest you to know that I made a date with Mr. Boynton for this coming Sunday. It's my birthday. Your birthday? <laughs> if I knew it was coming, I'd have baked a bomb. <laughs> All right, now let's stop fencing and lay our cards on the table, shall we? As for me... Then we're out of pie, so I got ice cream. Don't interrupt, Walter. As for me, Miss Brooks, I have long cherished our friendship with the deepest possible degree of repugnance. <laughs> I loathe you, darling, from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> from way back there... I'm shocked. I think you ought to apologize for those terrible things you said to Miss Brooks. After all... Excuse me, folks. Oh, hello, Mr. Boynton. Dear Mr. Boynton, do sit down. There's a chair for you right over here, Mr. Boynton. Just walk around, Miss Enright. That's too long a trip. He might run out of gas. <laughs> 
I'll just take your chair, Miss Brooks. Mine? I saw Mr. Carlton a minute ago, and he said he wants you to get right back to your classroom. <laughs> if you missed a few days of school, you're behind in some reports, which must be turned in before your afternoon classes, Miss Brooks. Oh, great. Well, I'll catch up with you later, Mr. Boynton. So long, Walter. Yeah, so long, Miss Brooks. Goodbye, Connie. Goodbye, Daisy. Uh, I like that, Miss Enright. What, Mr. Boynton? Uh, the way you and Miss Brooks address each other with such affection. <laughs> affection? It, it really gives me a warm feeling inside. Here you two are dating the same man tonight, and yet you're utterly free of petty jealousies. Well, I've known women in similar circumstances who do nothing but hurl catty remarks at each other. That, that's something I can't stand. Really, Mr. Boynton? Yes, indeed. But a wholesome, warm-hearted woman of goodwill, who at all times speaks endearingly of another woman, well, that's the woman for me. Oh, well, that's very interesting. But you know how I feel about Miss Brooks. She's not only remarkably intelligent, but breathtakingly beautiful. Huh? <laughs> I like you for saying that, Miss Enright. Uh, uh, just a minute. Uh, before Mr. Boynton came over here, you... Hey, it's said... your ice cream, Walter. <laughs> yes, Mr. Boynton. Every time I see dear Miss Brooks, I just want to hug her like the doll she is. Please, Miss Enright, not while I'm eating. <laughs> So if you want to get anywhere with Mr. Boynton, you've just got to be a, a wholesome, warm-hearted woman of goodwill, Miss Brooks. But it's the old story. You can catch more flies with honey than you can with vinegar. But I couldn't be so hypocritical as to coat Miss Enright with honeyed words, Walter. Well, just feed her the honey when Mr. Boynton's around. The minute he's gone, you can slip her the vinegar again. <laughs> I think you ought to give it a whirl at the barbecue, Miss Brooks. What have you got to lose? Well, maybe it is worth a try. All right, Walter, I'll take along some Mother Phil's pills and hug her like a doll. <laughs> Thanks for the tip. Yeah, don't mention it. See you later, Miss Brooks. Uh, where are you heading, Walter? Oh, it's down to the phone booth to call home, Mr. Boynton. My folks are going to visit relatives today, so I want to remind them to leave some money for me so I can have dinner at the drugstore. I guess I'll have to dine alone. Alone? Under the drugstore? Nonsense. I have plenty of food, Walter. Would you like to join us at the barbecue? Yeah, I'll say I would, boy. I'll be there, Mr. Boynton. <laughs> Good afternoon, Boynton. Good afternoon, sir. Oh, what sheer delight it is to see you, Miss Conklin. If there's anything that brings boundless joy to these tired old eyes, it's the sight of our beloved principal, whose genial personality and outstanding leadership have won him the love and respect of every... Oh, shut up! to the boy who may someday be your son-in-law. <laughs> Out of my sight, boob! Mr. Boynton, my friend, I, uh, I understand you're going to have a barbecue tonight in your backyard. Suppose I join you there and we'll have a million laughs. <laughs> very much to invite you, Mr. Conklin, but, well, I have already invited Walter Denton, and obviously you don't get along well with him. Mr. Boynton, shall I tell you a little secret about Walter? What? I love that boy. <laughs> what time do we eat? <laughs> I think I'll get some more charcoal for the barbecue pit, Miss Brooks. Excuse me. Surely. That's strange. Every time I turn my back, I seem to hear a peculiar sound. Hard to describe. 
Maybe it's my imagination, but... Oh, it must be. I didn't hear anything. I see you're making individual servings of hot sauce in separate pots, Miss Barton. Yes. Cute, aren't they? Oh, I wouldn't really call it hot sauce, though. Out of deference to the fair sex, I'm making it rather mild. How very considerate. So we men can take the real peppery stuff, Miss Brooks, but I wouldn't want to make it too hot for you. You never have. <laughs> Uh, skip it. <laughs> Lovely night, isn't it, Mr. Boynton? The firelight dancing in our eyes. Shadows playing softly through the trees. The stars like platinum pendants hanging aloft. The full, lustrous moon. Yes, indeed. This would be a great night for trapping gophers, Miss Brooks. <laughs> they often come out of their burrows on nights like this, you know. Without the trap, here comes one now. <laughs> Hi there, Miss Enright. Good evening, dear Mr. Boynton. And dear Miss Brooks, you look simply gorgeous. Oh, and you're ravishing. Your facial contours are magnificent. And your figure. Excuse me, girl. I've got to keep an eye on what do you going to say about my figure? Just that if your girdle snaps, we won't have any room for the table. <laughs> well, in that case, we could simply throw the mm-hmm. tape. Oh, something wrong, Mr. Boynton? Uh, it's nothing serious. I just licked my hand slightly with a barbecue knife. Oh, well, come along inside with me, Mr. Boynton. I'll bandage your little hand for you. Oh, you're very kind. <laughs> oh, come along inside with me, Mr. Boynton. I'll bandage your hand for you. <laughs> what a place. Good evening, Miss Brooks. Hello, Walter. Oh, Mr. Boynton. He's inside with Florence Nightingale. Why, <laughs> Mr. Boynton's turned his back on me this evening. The sauce is cooking in individual pots, Walter, so I'm fixing this one up special for Miss Enright. Yeah, but isn't that Tabasco sauce you're pouring in it? Uh-huh. So far, I've poured in about a pinch more than half a pint. Holy <laughs> smoke, if she needs that stuff, she'll explode. <laughs> That's all right, I'll stick my fingers in my ears. When I serve her this little grenade, I've got a hunch she'll let me have Mr. Boynton to myself tonight. Look, maybe she won't suspect me if you serve it, Walter. Would you mind? Mind? It'll be a pleasure. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Miss Enright. I certainly appreciate it. Oh, hello, Walter. Hi, Mr. Boynton. How are you, Miss Enright? Oh, couldn't be better. But since I had to bandage poor Mr. Boynton's hand, he'll be unable to serve. If one of you would be good enough to volunteer... I have a recruit, Miss Enright. Walter Denton, Mess Sergeant First Class. Oh. <laughs> yes, sweet Walter. I myself would volunteer, of course, but it's such a dreadfully hot night. You'll find it'll get hotter as it goes along. <laughs> I'll get things set up for you, Walter. Yes, thanks, Miss Brooks. Greetings, greetings, one and all. Hello, Mr. Conklin. Dear Mr. Boynton and Miss Ed Ryan. Walter's here, too, Mr. Conklin. Yes, good evening, sir. Walter, my boy, my boy. (laughs) Come close to me, son. Huh? Down, Arthur. I'll go help Miss Brooks. Well, how's it going, Miss Brooks? Fine. These three plates contain spare ribs covered with Mr. Boynton's mild sauce. This lethal plate here contains spare ribs covered with the Tabasco lemon candle for Miss Enright. <laughs> May heaven have mercy on her soul. <laughs> now, I'll serve them now while you put on the coffee, Miss Brooks. Excuse me. Ah, uh, here we are. Serves me that succulent dish, Denton. Ah, uh, uh, lady, sir, sir. Uh, here's your plate, Miss Enright. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> now, it's this one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is it? Well, it doesn't really matter, Walter. Well, that's what you think. <laughs> here you are. Now, I'll just put my plate down here. Uh, here's yours, Miss Duncan. Bless you, Bruce. 
left in a minute. Yeah, and here's yours, Mr. Boynton. No, give that to Miss Brooks. I'll wait till the coffee's ready. Well, I hope this sauce is hot. I love real hot sauce. <laughs> Sorry, sir, but I made my mild sauce tonight. Oh, well, that smells delightful. Mm-hmm. Now to bite into this delectable morsel. Mm-hmm. 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 Yes, Returns in just a moment. That makes America. Now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, after sampling Mr. Boynton's barbecue sauce from a recipe entitled I Don't Want to Set the World on Fire, I Just Want to Give You a Little Heartburn, <laughs> Mr. Thompson, Walter Denton, and Miss Enright fled the scene, leaving me alone with the bashful biologist. I, I can't understand it. I have many recipes for hot sauce, Miss Brooks, but I just gave them one of my mild ones. Ah, oh, too bad. I guess I spoiled the party for you. Spoiled the party? Certainly. Instead of being surrounded by your friends, particularly Miss Enright, now you'll have to spend the evening with just me. Well, we all have to make sacrifices now and then. <laughs> I forgive you, Mr. Boynton. You do? You mean it, Miss Brooks? Yeah, I think I could kiss you for that. I think you could, too. <laughs> I'm happy when you are. I know I'll bless like the very chicken, but, well, just one kiss. Here you are. <sighs> well, Mr. Boynton? Water! Water! <laughs> it's a lucky thing I gave him one of my mild ones. <laughs> 